Okay, this second part of the video is going to show again how to save games when you use RetroPie in RetroArch, but this isn't using the inbuilt game options when you choose to save in a save slot or the game saves your times. It's purely a snapshot or a save state process, which RetroArch understands, but the game doesn't have a concept of, so it's like grabbing a moment in time, saving that file away, which obviously is a bit larger than a, a save game data that just has some sort of cool lap times or where your character was in a game. This saves everything about where you are at that point, so it's a bit of a larger file. But it's a very quick and easy way for RetroArch to fire up a previous position. And it's particularly useful if the game doesn't have any save facility in it itself. This will let you carry on and progress from where you left last time in any game that's emulated with RetroArch, so you don't have to rely on it having an inbuilt save facility, you can just say you want to save it at this point, at this point, at this point, and there's also an automatic save option in here as well. So there's more options within the configuration file for this save state process as well. Um, but uh, you obviously the interface for it is through the um, playing the game itself. So you still load the game as normal, and you can save and load save states rather than save game data um, through this. And I've got a keyboard plugged in at the minute, but to do this you can map the hotkeys like other hotkeys to your joypad so you don't need a keyboard plugged in but I've got one at the moment to show an example so you can see at the moment on F0 here uh, it's, it's just running the demo but if I was to start a game and what I'll do I'll save a save state as I'm through the game so you can see it load and you can see that it's not just saving game data putting you back to the game and asking you to load it it jumps straight to where you save it. So just start here so you can see I'm in the middle of a game here next to that um, strip energy bar on the left there and I'll save it at this point and to save it by default the option to save state is F2 and because I've got a hotkey on my joypad I'm going to press the hotkey um, first so I'll hold down select and then I'm going to tap F2 and when I hit F2 down the bottom of the screen in yellow writing you should see condition come up so if I press F2 now there it says save state to slot 0 so by default there is only one state um, one save state option or save state file and that's 0 so you, every time I save my position I'd overwrite that file unless we change the configuration file and create many save states um, which it'll do automatically but for this purpose I just want to save one file which it did there and we'll see a bit later on where it's saving that in the file system. But now I know it's loaded. If I choose to give um, saved, if I choose to give up here, press give up yes, and go back to the main menu in game there. Now, if I want to save that or load that game that I just saved, rather than obviously the game itself isn't going to have a concept of the file, but I can load it by hitting F4 rather than F2. So if I hold down my hotkey again, which happens to be select, I can tap F4 and it immediately loads where it's left. It says at the bottom in yellow text there, loaded from state zero. And give up no, and I can carry on from exactly where I was. So if there's a game where there's a particularly long level or particularly long gap between two save states um, within the game itself, you can use this facility. And it's literally F2 to save, F4 to load. And that's all you have to do there. Separately, there is, using save states again, an auto save state option which will automatically, when you quit RetroArch cleanly, it will automatically save a save state. So you could be in the middle of the game, quit it, and it will automatically save one without you having to manually hit F2. And there's also an option associated with that to automatically fire straight back up to that, that automatic save state. So it's a really quick and easy way to go back to exactly where you were without having any manual intervention. And you can see that in a minute in the file system as well. But in terms, of, um, in terms of making sure that you can load and save within the game, you just make sure if you've got a hotkey set to press that first, F2 to save, F4 to load, and then you can carry on exactly where you were. And the difference obviously between this and the previous video is it's not managed by the game itself. It's, it's something that RetroArch does, so where the systems are emulated by RetroArch, like Mega Drive and NES, it can manage that. And um, it's great for games that haven't got that facility built in, so you can get much further on these particularly hard games. Okay, now let's have a look at the file system and where 
you can tweak the settings for these save states. Okay, so now we can see where RetroArch saves those .state files, the, the game save states, as opposed to the inbuilt game data like you'd normally see. So if we connect again uh, using an FTP client, you can get the IP, whatever your IP is, put it in the host name and the user's pi, that password raspberry, hit connect and that'll just hook up to wherever your pi is and the folder we want is the same as before which is RetroPi and inside there we go for ROMs and inside the ROMs directory uh, because we're looking at F0, look at the SNES folder and at the bottom of the SNES folder you can see the state file now that's the one that got written when I hit F2 to manually save that and also there's an option uh, when it quits to automatically write a state file and you can see the difference there because that dot state is your manual one and dot state dot auto is the one that it automatically can write and if you choose to automatically load save states that auto file is the one that it will pick up it won't do your manual file you can load those um, with F4 and you can have multiple manual state, state files and they can increment in number and you can have as many as you want but you can also set it just to have one manual save point and that's the one that you would load on F4 and this is the one that would automatically load so I put it in the same directories it's a much bigger file about half a meg than the um, save game state which is about 2k there but they're all going there and then you can use them as normal so the other area that we can look at here is the configuration of using those states and that's in the same RetroArch file so if I go back up here or the RetroArch configuration file which is in the opt directory and retropy and configs and um, all folder and this is it here so this retroarch um, file is for all of the emulators that retroarch uses so you could go into a specific emulator and just change so for example if I was to go into the SNES folder here uh, SNES folder. You could just edit that RetroArch if you wanted a specific way that the SNES emulation would deal with save states, but often um, with save states it's just as easy to go into the one that deals with it all. So I right mouse on that, hit view edit, and that will fire up and show the configuration file. And there's a few areas that um, are useful here. So the first one is similarly when we looked at the SRM save file directory, the dot state has a save, file, save state directory. So they don't have to be saved in that ROM folder. You could specify where you want your states to get saved. And the second section here, just below, is about how to deal with those auto. So this is the one where it ends dot state dot auto. So if I put auto save there, when I quit out cleanly of the emulator, it would write a dot state file for me in that directory. And if I put true there, it would automatically load that dot state dot auto file as well so that that's where that gets saved and loaded to um, separately there is another section in here that's useful for dealing with um, the same states it's down here somewhere um, okay so right down the bottom we've got a section here when saving a save state a save state index is automatically increased before it's saved. So this is where you can have multiple um, save states. By default it's false, so every time you save it just saves to that one file. If you put true here it would be like save state 1, uh, save state 2 and it would also load if you hit um, F4 it would load the most recent one so it's a quick and easy way to manage the saving and loading of manual save states but you can try this out have a look at the directory see what it's writing and you, you can understand it clearly that way and there's one more setting in here I think uh, setting is let's have a look for save states okay save state this is what you want here save states by default the option is input state state F2 now if you hit F2 and nothing happens it might be because you've got a hotkey so hold down the hotkey and then hit F2 and then it would probably do it there um, I'll also put in the comments how to map this to a joypad key so you don't have to use a keyboard if you don't want to you can do it in game which is quite a sort of popular method to do it much quicker um, so and that's all the, the options are there really save state, what you, how do you want to manually save it how do you want to manually load it and then below here you've just got one more option relating to that 
to automatically increase the slot name so when you do do a manual save it increases the number and you can choose oh do I want to save in slot sort of 4 or 6 or however you want to manage that but quite often a single save state might uh, suffice for most people and that's that's everything you want really so all the options are in those retroarch.cfg files and there's two separate ways as you see in a save in the game in part one we saw how to do it in the game itself using in-game menus and separately if that's not possible we prefer to save more often or more specific points in the game you can use the save state status which is uh, another quick and easy way of doing it